In this exercise, we're going to learn how to use our dimensioning tools. And in order to be able to do this, we're going to dimension the lower half of our building down here. So we're going to place a string of dimensions is going to go from here all the way on over. In fact, we'll place three different strings of dimensions. So let's go ahead and zoom in here on the lower half of our building. Next, dimensions are annotation objects, two-dimensional objects that only show up in the view that you place them in. So as a result of that, because they're annotation objects, we're going to come up here to the Annotate tab and then find our different dimensioning tools. One dimension I want to place first before we place our dimension string going across is to show off this little angular tool here. What it's going to allow us to do is actually put an angular dimension, sort of like what the preview there is showing us. So if we select on angular, and now we can kind of look around and see if we can find an angle that we can place this on. In this particular case, I'm just going to place it from right here to right here, just so we can see how the tool works. So it's just a matter of clicking on one line, clicking on the second line, and it automatically generates for us what that angle happens to be. And if you just click in space, it'll place it wherever that point is that you just clicked at. And if you hit escape a couple of times to get out of that, it'll place that dimension there and it'll be a permanent dimension and it'll print just the way that you see it on the screen. Now, some of these other dimensions, such as radial or diameter, work exactly the same way as that angular one did. All you have to do is pick that circular shape and it'll automatically drop in the radial dimension or just automatically place a diameter dimension in that location. Arc length is very, very similar. You end up picking one spot on an arc, a second spot on an arc, and it'll automatically give you a dimension between those two spots. Now, the main dimensions here that we want to be able to focus on now are going to be linear and aligned. Now, if we're going to start, what we'd really like to do is start with aligned. So we'll go ahead and select on aligned up here. Now, an aligned dimension will work in situations where your dimensions aren't necessarily going up and down or from side to side. In this case, we don't really have a dimensional area that we can really dimension that on and show that kind of angle going on. But aligned dimensions have an extra property about them that makes them a lot more powerful than what your standard dimension would be. And that's the reason why I like to use them a lot more often than this linear dimension right here. That extra power is that you can dimension multiple things at a time by using an aligned dimension. So let's go ahead and try that. So come over here. We'll notice that there's a dimension here that says wall center lines or a setting here that says wall center lines. Well, we can leave this for right now. It's not going to affect what we're getting ready to place. There's an option here that says pick, and it says individual references. Let's change this to be entire walls. And there's a big options button that shows up now. If you click on the options button, this is where some of the hidden power of the align dimension tool rests. What it will do is it will automatically dimension any openings you have in walls. It can automatically dimension any walls that intersect the wall you're getting ready to dimension. But it can also automatically dimension such things as your structural grids. Let's go ahead and try this. So right now, let's select on intersecting grids and click on OK. Now there's a wall that goes all the way across. If you pick on that wall, move straight down, you'll notice that each of the structural grid points now have a dimension snapping to them. You can see there's also a dimension here that says 15 foot and 10 foot. This is because we have a special condition going on in our wall and it's trying to dimension that special condition as well. That's okay, we can make modifications of that so that dimension there doesn't necessarily show up that way. Now just move your dimension string completely down and then somewhere out here, just go ahead and click. And that will place that entire dimension string going across. And hit escape a couple of times in order to be able to get out of the command. Now, if all we wanted was this dimension to go from structural grid to grid line to grid line to grid line, all we have to do is select on this, click on the little circle that shows up sort of in the middle here, and it's called Move Witness Line. And if you click and hold your mouse button down, move over to the structural grid that's right next to the area where you want to be able to get rid of the dimension, and then let go, it'll automatically move that line over and then get rid of that extra dimension that you didn't need. The next kind of dimension that we're going to do is still going to be an aligned dimension, but instead of picking the entire walls, we're just going to do the individual references this time. And if we select here, and then select this grid line all the way down here at the end, we can move it down, 
And we can see it's going to generate, in this case, a 100-foot dimension, which is the overall length between those two different grid lines. Now, there's one more that we can come in here and do. And um, let's move in here. And this time, instead of doing a line dimension, let's just practice with doing a linear dimension. Now, technically, we could use a line dimension for this one as well. But uh, just so you get some practice with using linear, let's choose on linear. With linear, it isn't quite as evident where it is that you're picking. In fact, it gets to be really hard to see. If you really squint and look really, really hard, you might be able to see a blue dot on your screen whenever you're clicking. And it's wherever that point is that you're selecting on, that's where that dimension is going to get placed. In this case, I'm taking the time to just click on each and every one of these corners here and placing a dimension to each one of those. And I'll go ahead and just drag this down. We can even drag it down here in between these two different dimension strings and just click once you get down here. But make sure you click out in space. If you hit the escape key or anything like that, it'll delete the entire dimension string. And obviously we didn't want to click all those different points and then accidentally delete the entire dimension string. One more change or modification that we can make to this is if we zoom in here, we can see there's a four foot dimension. Well, sometimes people like it when it's inside here, but one of the things that I found is I really dislike when these lines get broken up this way. It sometimes makes it very hard to read where that dimension is getting taken to. So one of the things that you can do is you can select on the dimension, click on this little dot that shows up right here, and you can pull it out to the side. All right, and it'll automatically add this little line, this little leader to the end of it, indicating where that dimension should be taken to. And we can do the same thing over here on this end. All right, and just pull it straight out. Now, I do want to point out one more thing, and it's possible that during this process, you accidentally clicked on one of these dimensions or you accidentally clicked on one of the pieces of text. If you did that, and maybe you did it twice, you may have gotten this dialog box pop up on your screen. Now, this usually gets people excited because they think that they can come in here and change the dimensions and make it be something that it isn't. Basically, bluff or fool Revit into giving a, a bad dimension. But if you try to do that inside of Revit, and I'm just going to pick a random dimension and then try to click on OK to that, it gives you one of the biggest error dialog boxes that shows up inside of the program, essentially tells you that you can't make changes to this dimension. The reasoning is, is that they don't want you to bluff or not draw things to scale in Revit. They really want you to make everything be to scale. And then um, if you do, all your dimensions will just work out. So this replace with text is really in here for such things as notes like field verify or, well, you can kind of think of any other kind of piece of text you might want to place in between two different arrows. And you can replace this with whatever value that you wish. But if you wanted to be able to add maybe a plus or a minus or a diameter sign before or after this number, you can by doing it down here. Also, if you needed to place some piece of text above or below, you could do that as well. And in this case, I'm just going to type in field verify, and the line is listed as being below, and click on OK. And you'll notice that field verify is now a piece of text directly underneath that dimension that we tried to modify. What we need to remember is dimension in Revit is simple, but you always need to be able to select an object to dimension, and you can't fudge your dimensions.